Hey guys, Omoto here from FTJ and welcome to our 7th episode of Technology. Along with me, I have my co-host Anandhan and let's get this episode started. Starting off this week's news, we have a banger for you guys. Apparently the world's first under the display selfie camera has been unveiled and it's coming to a phone that's going to be not just like a concept phone but it's actually going to be mass produced. So the phone we are talking about right now is the ZTE Axon 25G. So Anandan, what do you think of this new phone? Actually this phone is really good but do you remember the phones from Redmi and Oppo like the prototype phones Oh yeah uh, I think that was Xiaomi but yeah Xiaomi and Oppo had yeah. uh, showed off some phones before that had this tech and looks like ZT has perfected it so yeah. they might be the world's first in here and they don't got mass produced yes <laughs> quote and quote mass produced not a concept phone guys <laughs> so not something like a Mi Max so what are the specs do we have in the ZT Axon 25G Yes, big name, I know. Uh, we know uh, till now that it's going to come with an AMOLED screen, probably Full HD+, 6.92 inches, pretty big. Uh, other than that, uh, we don't know much about it other than maybe uh, the camera, the selfie camera, the one that's hidden under the screen. That's going to be a 32 megapixel unit. Talking about the rear sensors, we don't know much about them right now. But what we do know is that the primary is going to be a 64 megapixel sensor and that's going to be accompanied by an 8 megapixel pixel probably an ultra wide camera but we don't know at this moment we don't even know if it's going to be like triple cameras quad cameras how many ever anyway so that's about it for the ZT Axon or do you have something to add Anantan? actually we have a little leak about the SOC so we don't have confirmation if it's like Snapdragon or MediaTek but we know that the SOC max out uh, 2.4 gigahertz Oh wow. And also the battery is 40, uh, 4120 mAh. Yeah, I think the we also know about the battery that's going to be 4120 mAh. Seems a little small by today's standards, especially given that we have such a large screen on there, right? Yeah. Anyway, moving on to the next news. By the way, the ZT launches on September 1st this uh, year. Cool. So for the second news, we have the fact that Apple is absolutely minting money right now. They are a $2 trillion company. But here's a fun fact. They're not the first one. They're actually second. Anthony, who's the first? The first company is actually in Saudi Arabia. It's the Saudi Aramco, which is basically government-owned, Saudi government-owned, you can say. And in like this year, they went public. So basically, instantly they hit uh, two trillion. You know why they hit two trillion? I guess that's because of their all that oil and yeah. so Aramco basically dominates the oil and gas industry. So you know oil equals cash nowadays. So switch to electric, I guess, right? Go Tesla. <laughs> to the next news. So the third big news story that we are covering this week is that the Apple iPhone 12 might be actually manufactured in India. Yes, Vistron, the company is actually making a plant right now in Bangalore where the iPhone 12s, yes, this is the latest iPhones that's still not yet been released. They will be manufactured from the middle of 2021, so next year, in India itself. And I think as of now, we already have iPhones being manufactured in India, right? Yeah, actually Foxconn manufactures the iPhone 11s in a plant right here in Chennai. So if you want an iPhone 11, you can buy a one that's made in India. How do you know which one is made in India? You can check the back of the box and you can see it is made in India. Okay, yeah. so is this like the Redmi phones where they are so desperate to prove they're made in India, like have their badges like four times around the yeah. box or something? Yeah, cool. it's not like that, but it is made in India. <laughs> okay, cool. So <laughs> moving on to the next news. So the next news is about the launch dates of the latest Pixel series. So we have a leak that the Google Pixel 5 and the Google Pixel 4a 5G is tipped to launch at September 30th. So the Pixel 5 5G comes at black and green color and the Pixel 4a 5G comes at only black color. So we also have the leaks about the specs. So yeah, so what we know till now is that apparently this year's Pixel is not sporting a flagship processor. 
Actually, it might even be uh, something as mid-range as a 765G, although we have heard rumors that it might even be a new Snapdragon processor, that's the 768G. Other than that, well, a lot is not known about the Pixel, but something that strikes me personally as surprising is that despite Pixels generally having an AMOLED screen, this year the fingerprint sensor for the Pixel 5 is on the back, so it's not a uh, under the display fingerprint sensor, instead it's like a capacitive sensor. So kind of strange that one. Anyway, do we know anything about the availability? Okay, the Pixel 4 series will be available in the US, Canada, the UK, Ireland, France, Germany and India? not India, uh, oh, Australia. So we don't have any confirmation when the Pixel series devices will come in India. So all we can do is cross our fingers. I hope. So next up, we have some positive news about the Indian economy. So the Indian e-commerce segment sees a 17% rise in order volume. So this is basically with the categories like health, pharmacy, fast moving uh, consumer goods, right? So stuff like big basket. Yeah. And then there is also agricultural stuff that's happening. So basically, I think because of the COVID situation and so many people having to stay at home, uh, that's why we are seeing a lot of first time online shoppers. So people yeah. who generally pick up maybe their regular food or their marketing materials, everyday groceries even, from uh, shops that are near their house, People like, you know, even my dad yeah, generally used to go to the market every day. And now because of this situation, he's stuck at home. And I think for the first time, he's started shopping on Big Basket. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think that's like a lot of the reason why this is happening. And anyway, a glimmer of hope in the sad COVID times. Yeah, yeah. Even I had a hard time teaching my mom how to order from Big Basket. Nice. What did she end up ordering? She didn't order anything. Oh. <laughs> On to the next news and how many of you guys know this? Intel is actually making a graphics processor and not just any other run-of-the-mill graphics processor. It is one that is actually putting NVIDIA up to its task. The new Intel XCHP GPU. So uh, guys, again, uh, before I go into the main, uh, like the heart of the news, uh, this XEHP GPU, this is not a commercial GPU. This is not one that you or I can buy. This is a GPU that's meant for workstations, for cloud streaming services, so stuff like that. So uh, they have been testing out this GPU in their own labs and they have published some results. And from that, it seems like as uh, far as it comes to, you know, CUDA codes or as you say, floating point calculations. So uh, NVIDIA puts that as CUDA codes, but uh, generally for uh, any other graphics cards, as far as floating point calculations go, that's, uh, that's uh, generally a good demarcation of how good that graphics card is. And that's measured in teraflops. So Intel, the XEHP can do up to 42 teraflops for the quad core cluster. Uh, in comparison, the A1000, that's uh, NVIDIA's competitor, it can do up to 19.5 teraflops, ter sorry, 19.5 teraflops. Yeah. So that's, uh, Intel is basically doubling that. And to give you guys again a comparison uh, for commercial GPUs, the best that we have right now is NVIDIA's 2080 Ti, right? That's top of the line. Yeah. And that can only do 13.45 teraflops. So this is almost as good as, you know, it's over three times that. So Intel is really killing it. And again, uh, if you guys remember, I said it was a quad cluster. So what, Intel is doing here is kind of similar to what AMD did what, with their Ryzen processors. So Ryzen can actually add on more dice. So instead of a 16 core die having 16 cores on a single die, it's actually four core clusters being added together. So this is kind of like that. And uh, this can be linearly increased. And that's something that we have never seen in GPUs before. So GPUs used to come in as a single die and you couldn't just, you know, add on two GPUs and have them work simultaneously. So if indeed Intel has figured this puzzle out, this could be really, really interesting for cloud gaming as well as for, you know, PC gamers like you and I. Nice. 
So the next news comes from Realme. So the Realme X7 series has been teased on Vivo. And from the teasers, we can tell that it's a display focused phone. So we have like 1200 nits of peak brightness display, 120 hertz AMOLED display, small bezels. And along with that, we have more features, right? Like yeah. display focused features, like it's strobe proof, it has got DC dimming, and it has also got eye protection, especially when, you know, using it in low light situations. And talking about other specs, we also have 65 watt fast charging and it weighs less than 200 grams. Cool. I just hope it's that doesn't mean that it's made out of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> so are you excited for the X7? Probably. I mean, see, till now the specs look great, but let's just wait and find out what the processor is inside. So I have a question for you guys. Do you think there is a pro variant of the X7 or an ultra variant of the X7? Let us know in the comments below. I'm just excited to see which one plays PUBG better. After all, a new update for PUBG is coming. So, Anandan, what does this new update have? So, the PUBG Mobile New Era announcement teased at August 24th. And according to the update, we are like hoping that there will be a 2.0 version of the Era Angle. So, everyone's favorite map, Era Angle, is getting an upgrade. And we have some more changes here, like changes in the building in terms of design, including areas like Milta Power, Quarry, Prison, and others. And players will also see trenches, abandoned tanks, barricades, and other addition to the map. There is also a new weapon, they're calling it M1014, I guess, along with some balancing changes and some bugs fixes as well. So also there are changes in Chia Park. Have you ever been to the Chia Park? Not really, PUBG Mobile is not my game. <laughs> I just wish there was a Mirage 2.0. And wrapping up this week's news, we have a great security feature for those of you who use Chrome and Android. So what's this feature? Well, most of us use passwords and uh, without using a password manager, something like uh, LastPass, uh, most of us have actually gotten used to using Chrome's default password manager. And personally, like, I use it a lot because heck, I change phones almost every other week and it's useful to just have Google save your password so that whenever, you know, I sign into a new device, I just have to open up the app and automatically it just signs in. But what happens if one of these apps or one of those websites that you have saved passwords for gets hacked and your details get leaked? Well, Google has come up with a solution for that and Chrome will now actually notify you if one of your passwords or emails has been compromised. And then of course, you can go ahead, change that and do all of that stuff. So Anantan, uh, how can we access this feature on Chrome? Actually, it's not available for Chrome, but if you have Chrome Canary, you can actually access it from Chrome slash flags. Okay, that's interesting. Well guys, that's about it for this episode. As usual, like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching till the end. This is Amorto. This is Anantan. Saying goodbye for the day. Have a nice weekend, guys. Bye-bye.